for class Environmental studies We're trying to be green Environmental studies We're staring at our screens Environmental studies We're trying to keep up Environmental studies But everything is Hey y'all, how's it going? Um, welcome to another exciting episode of the EMVS 110. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the presidency. So in this video, I want you to think about your policy brief assignments. What's an environmental problem, either from this world or a fictional world, that you think could be solved with a new policy? Either a different way of doing things, or a whole different constitution um, for that area. So, uh, for some of you, uh, you might want to solve like a national level problem, or something that in your fictional world is affecting the whole fictional country. And so in that case, either you want to think about the real president, or you want to think about some kind of character that you're going to say has like comparable powers to the president. And you're going to argue why it should be in the, in the interests of that person to enact the policy that you're uh, writing your brief on behalf of. And so in order to, to help you do that assignment, uh, I want to give a little bit of detail as to you know, how presidents think about the politics of what they're doing. So uh, we're going to look at the general like definition of a presidency uh, and then in this video just how they get elected. So the important thing to think about here is that some countries around the world have a combined um, every time I say the word combination, I think about the Pizza Hut, combination Pizza Hut and Taco Bell. Um, but some countries have a combined uh, president uh, um, and Speaker of the House, and they call that position the Prime Minister. Other countries split those powers, and that's what the US has done. So uh, the presidency is an aspect of the separation of powers. Uh, it takes the executive function, so enacting the law and enforcing the law and supervising all the bureaucrats who enforce the law and it makes all of those powers separate in the sense that a different person is doing them and the electoral mechanisms for deciding who will be in charge of those functions is uh, necessarily separate. You have to win a whole separate election um, to be in charge of this thing and the the, per the power to like fire that person is separate from the power to fire your legislature in the sense that they're different, different elections to get them in, different elections to get them out. Um, and so the presidency is part of that. Um, but it's also important to think about the presidency is more than just the president. Some of the most important powers that the president has uh, is to appoint people to the federal bureaucracy. And so when we're thinking about like what kinds of policy changes could a president make on the environment, well sometimes it's not just like saying we're going to do this differently, it's saying I'm going to put someone in charge of this who has a different ideology. Uh, and so if you appoint like um, a pro-immigration person to be like supervising ICE, they're going to enforce that very differently um, to someone who is really anti-immigration. And so you haven't changed any laws there, you're just changing the person who's sort of enforcing the law, uh, and they can sort of interpret the statute slightly differently. So we're going to see a presidential administration, rather than, which is all of those people that were appointed by the president, as being sort of the presidency, rather than just thinking about it as a single person. We're going to do the same thing when we talk about the judiciary. A lot of people think that the focus should be on the Supreme Court, but really much more law is interpreted at the state level or at the circuit court level. Anyway, so that's what a presidency is. It's the separation of powers uh, and the whole um, branch that's in charge of executing the instructions of the legislative branch. Uh, you become president uh, through winning the presidential election, uh, which is going to happen in November, question mark. Um, and you go through the primaries, and so I want to talk a little bit about that today as well. Uh, in terms of the formal powers of the presidency, the most important one probably is deciding how to interpret 
uh, federal legislation and staffing the bureaucracy. They also have a lot of leeway on foreign policy and on the presidential veto and in just like getting media attention. So in the next video we'll talk a little bit about the formal and informal powers of the president. So um, when the powers of like deciding what the law should be, so legislating, and then the power of executing that law, um, the executive branch, when those two things are separated uh, and they are like you have separate elections to decide who's going to be in charge of those people um, and or in charge of those functions I should say and losing control of this doesn't affect uh, that so if the um, Republicans lose a midterm election and they lose control of the House of Representatives they still have the presidency uh, and winning the presidency doesn't like doesn't mean that you get to select the legislature. Um, so they are completely separate elections. Losing, winning one doesn't mean you won the other, and losing one doesn't mean you lost the other. So that is like the two conditions of separation. Uh, they can't fire each other and they can't hire each other uh, in sort of job terms. Um, so they're completely separate, and sometimes they, they are divided between different parties. So an interesting thing you might want to talk about in the discussion thread about this is uh, why might voters be in favour of divided government? So why might it be like something that voters want to have a Republican president and a Democratic House? So that's what the presidency, uh, that's like the concept of it in the Constitution. Uh, how do you become president? Well, you probably already know, but you win the election. Uh, it's important to just go over the basics of the Electoral College. Uh, so the idea is that um, every state has at least two, uh, at least three, sorry, uh, electors representing each of its three representatives to Congress. So every state has at least two senators and at least one House representative, regardless of population. From then on, you get more votes in the Electoral College uh, based on the number of representatives to the House that you have. So it is slightly proportional to population, but because the minimum is three, um, even states that have incredibly low populations will still get three votes in the Electoral College. And so it is somewhat proportional, but somewhat non-proportional. And so to win the presidency, you don't have to win a majority of the popular vote, as we know, uh, you only have to win a majority of the Electoral College. Uh, and there's also like some loopholes. Uh, most states, by tradition, if you win a majority of the popular vote in that state, you get all of their electoral college votes. But that's not that could change. Um, there's also a movement to uh, get rid of the electoral college. If you did, though, then that would disadvantage small states and could have implications for federal stability. So in the group presentations that you're doing this week on federalism, you might want to think about how getting rid of the Electoral College could play into that. But this is how you become president. Uh, how do people vote? Well, the easiest way to think about how people vote and why they vote the way they do, which we will talk about a lot during this course, uh, is to think about party identification, candidate charisma, and issue positions. Party ID, like this general sense of like, do I identify with a political party? In politics, generally speaking, do you think of yourself as a Republican, or do you think of yourself as a Democrat, or do you think of yourself as something else? If we know how you answer that question, we probably know who you're going to vote for for president. Because most Republicans vote for uh, Republican candidates for president, and most people who think of themselves for Democrats vote for um, Democratic candidates for president. So you can see that in this chart that there are more Democrats in the country and have there have been for sort of 60 years um, than Republicans, but Republicans turn out to vote more. And so they tend to, um, any disadvantage in like sheer numbers tends to get uh, weighed out by um, turnout rates. And you can see that most of the strong Democrats vote at a rate of 90% plus for Democratic candidates for president. Uh, and most Republicans um, who really strongly think of themselves as Republicans always vote for Republican candidates for president. And there's really only a few people in the middle. So if you're thinking about your policy brief and how do you get the president to uh, enact the policy that you care about, think about how it's going to appeal to the strong partisans that they want to turn out at a high rate and think about how it's going to uh, appeal to the independents and the moderates that they might be able to win on the margins. 
Environmental policy is often not really a big part of those calculations. And so often what environmentalists will do uh, is think about um, how the environment intersects with other issues. So this is the list of what people saw as the most important problem in America over the last like um, eight to ten months. Uh, obviously, like the last results here are from September 2019, so none of the virus stuff is included. Um, but you can see that what people thought were the most important issues were generally economic, uh, and then there were some problems with the government, so like 20% plus of people thought that the government or poor leadership was the biggest problem in America, immigration was another big problem, uh, then race relations, and then we get to climate change. So mostly it's the economy, uh, and then maybe like fifth or sixth down the list is environment and climate change. And it's like maybe 5% of the population see that as the most important issue. So you have to do quite a lot of work in your policy briefs to convince a president um, that this is a really important issue that they should do something about. Uh, and then you'll see like the list of other issues that it could be connected to is also really long. Um, so like there are some people who thought that like uh, ISIS was the biggest problem facing America, like 1% of people. Like, they just wake up in the morning and they're like, ISIS, like every day. Um, but, you know, that is relatively rare, and it's mostly about the economy. So when we're thinking about what the president does, we're going to begin with this idea of the separation of powers so that we're grounding all of our analysis in a clear um, and rigorous definition. Uh, we're going to think about how they get elected as, like, core to understanding their incentives. Politicians want to win re-election. They do that by winning a majority of the electoral college, and most people vote based on like their sense of what is a party representing my group. Do I feel like I'm part of this group? So it's this group identity and, and a group brand name almost that is important, much more than issues. So when you're thinking about your policy brief, think about how it affects the president's brand. And so that's kind of where I want us to end. Um, the final question that I have for discussion uh, is um, I want you to think about every movie that you can think of that features a US president, a fictional, so Independence Day has a character playing the US president, uh, My Date with the President's Daughter has uh, a US president, um, and we're just going to make a list of all of the US presidents, uh, all of the movies featuring different US presidents. And so we'll put that in the discussion thread. And once we've got like a good number, uh, we'll talk about common themes and patterns uh, across all of those fictional portrayals. Does that make sense? I don't know why I'm asking. I'm just howling into the abyss. Um, but that's what we're going to do. So uh, we're going to look for patterns in um, portrayals of the president. OK, so uh, hope you're having a good day. Uh, if day is even a relevant unit of time anymore, um, but take it easy, uh, cheerio.